Hello everyone, welcome back. In this particular video, we're going to talk about the reactions of ethers. Uh, now, ethers, uh, as I've noted here, these are very stable, okay? Uh, read that as unreactive, okay? These are very stable, unreactive uh, compounds. Uh, which allows for their use in a variety of uh, reactions, actually. Uh, but when they are in presence of a strong acid, they do undergo cleavage. So one reaction that we're going to talk about here is the acidic cleavage of ethers. Uh, and uh, this reaction happens usually like uh, at a significant rate with uh, HBr and HI. So you need a very strong acid for doing this reaction. And what happens is the ether cleaves and it becomes the alkyl halide. So again, I've used two different R groups here to separate out the two alkyl parts. Okay, so we have one R part and the other one is an R prime. They could be the same. But when you do this cleavage, what you get is you get an alkyl halide corresponding to the R group. You get an alkyl halide corresponding to the R prime part of the molecule. So you get RBr, R prime Br plus water. This oxygen comes out as water. So let's look at the mechanism of this reaction and then we'll talk about like some other details. So the mechanism of this reaction and we'll use a specific uh, ether to walk us through the mechanism. So essentially what we're going to do is we're going to discuss the cleavage of uh, ethyl methyl ether. Uh, okay, this is an ethyl group that's a methyl group. So it's an ethyl methyl ether, or it could be a methoxy ethane. Uh, either ways, uh, IUPAC name versus common name. So if we do an acidic cleavage, of this ether and we use HBr in excess uh, under forcing conditions. So we are heating this reaction. When you do this, we're going to get ethyl bromide plus methyl bromide plus water. So our organic products are going to be ethyl bromide and methyl bromide. So let's look at the mechanism of how this happens. Okay. So under the reaction conditions, the ethyl methyl ether in presence of a strong acid on a, and under forcing conditions, the ether, notice it's usually like when you have an acid, it's an acid base kind of a re reaction that happens first, the initial reaction. So the ether is going to act as a base use its lone pair to deprotonate or get protonated, this acid. So it gets protonated, the ether molecule gets protonated. And by the end of this, we will get uh, the protonated ether, plus we would have Br minus, okay? And now uh, this has converted this ether into what looks like an alcohol. So that's a good leaving group. So essentially at this point, what can happen is this Br minus, it can go and do an SN2 on one of these carbon atoms that was alpha, okay? Because this was the functional group. So this is an alpha carbon. This is also an alpha carbon. So this is alpha and this is also alpha. So at this point, the bromide can go and attack the methyl group here, which is an alpha carbon, or it could attack this carbon of the ethyl group, which is also alpha. Now this is an SN2-like attack. So that means the attack on a methyl group is going to be more favorable because it's a backside attack. So the bromide is going to go and attack this carbon here. Simultaneously, this bond is going to leave, okay? So there is a carbon over there. That's very important to note. Uh, uh, so what we will get by the end here, and sorry, this is an acid-base reaction. So this is an equilibrium, uh, okay? It is a reversible reaction. Uh, and then uh, the attack happens. So what we would get at the end is we're going to get this part 
out, that's leaving. So the hydroxyl group is now connected to the alcohol part of the molecule. So we get ethanol and the bromide went with that methyl group. So we will get methyl bromide along with it. So we've got one of the products, the alkyl halides that has already formed. Now there's excess acid here. <clears throat> so in a subsequent step, there could be another acid base reaction between the alcohol and the HBr. So this is now very similar to the substitution reaction of an alcohol. Okay, so the alcohol would get protonated. It would convert that hydroxyl group into a good leaving group. And plus here we are going to make Br minus. Okay, now that's again a nucleophile there's a good leaving group here. So the Br minus now does another or does a backside attack on this alpha carbon because that's an alpha carbon as far as the alcohol is concerned. That's our functional group. This is the alpha carbon. So the important thing to remember is anytime there's an SN2 or an SN1 kind of attack, it always happens at the alpha carbon. The nucleophile comes and attacks the alpha carbon. So that's why I'm writing these out. So the bromide goes and attacks the alpha carbon. The water is going to leave along with its electrons or the oxygen is going to leave with its electrons so that in the end we will have ethyl bromide and plus we would have water. And so if you notice, starting from that ether, now we've synthesized the methyl bromide, we've synthesized ethyl bromide, and plus we have water. And the ether has basically broken down. It is cleaved into the corresponding alkyl halides, uh, uh, which are the products here. Okay. Now, important thing to note here uh, in the mechanism is... Uh, let me get rid of this some um, sticks here, make some space. Okay, so important point to notice in the mechanism are the two SN2 like attacks or SN2 attacks that are happening here. So this is an SN2. This attack here is also an SN2. And what we should remember is that SN2 attacks occur on sp3 hybridized carbons. Okay. Only sp3 hybridized carbons undergo this backside attack, uh, SN2 attack, or even if it's an SN1. Uh, substitution, only uh, sp3 hybridized undergo that attack. And uh, at, in this second portion here, it is very likely that, or, or if you have a tertiary carbon somewhere here, it is possible that you get an SN1-like attack, okay? Uh, so SN1 uh, type substitution is possible when the alpha carbon is tertiary in nature, okay? So if the alpha carbon is tertiary, then at either of these steps, it is possible that the bromide comes in via an SN1-like mechanism, okay, or an SN1-type substitution. Uh, but whether it's SN1 or SN2, uh, you need carbons that are sp3 hybridized, okay? What would happen if you had a carbon which was not sp3 hybridized? And so let's use an example Let's use an example of an ether where the carbon is not sp3 hybridized. Okay, what happens when 
one of the alpha carbons is not sp3 hybridized okay an example that we're going to choose is let's see this molecule okay now if you notice we have two alpha carbons alpha and alpha our alpha carbon here is sp3 hybridized but this alpha carbon is sp2 hybridized so we have an alpha carbon that is not sp3 hybridized okay so if we do an acidic cleavage on this molecule our products are going to be an alcohol. In this particular case, it's a phenol plus an alkyl halide. We will not get two alkyl halides, okay? So we get a phenol and an alkyl Halide. Now, why does that happen? The mechanism of the reaction has the answer to it. So if we draw a mechanism for this, the first step is going to be an acid-base reaction where this ether gets protonated. Okay, so we can draw the protonated ether. Uh, let's put the hydrogen over there, the lone pair here, and this oxygen is positively charged. Plus, we've made bromide, which was the leaving group. Now, the bromide at this point, it can go and attack the alpha carbon here. And that's the only alpha carbon it would attack. It will not attack the alpha carbon here because this is not sp3 hybridized it would not undergo an sn1 or sn2 type reaction so it's going to attack that alpha carbon and this would give us phenol this bond's going to break come to that oxygen the lone pair or the bond breaks and becomes a lone pair on the oxygen so we get this part of the molecule phenol oxygen with two lone pairs plus we get ethyl bromide. Now beyond this, okay, uh, like we saw previously, this oxygen can get protonated, okay? It can get protonated, but the halide will not attack this alpha carbon because this is sp2 hybridized. So the reaction basically stops right here. And so your products are only the phenol and the alkyl bromide. So one alkyl bromide and one phenol. So uh, for us to make those two alkyl halides or the two alkyl halides as products, it is important that our uh, starting ether has two alpha carbons that are sp3 hybridized. So that is uh, uh, pretty much the reaction of ethers that we will talk about here. Okay, so which is the acid catalyzed cleavage of ethers. Uh, and again, it requires very strong acids like HBr and or HI under forcing conditions. I hope uh, you all find this discussion helpful. Bye.